Okay, problem six just screams out. Make sure you know what you're reading and do a table. So, they began inventory 30,000 units of its only product at $8. Okay, beginning inventory. Two hundred and forty thousand. It's eight times thirty thousand. The following transactions occurred. So we purchased one hundred and fifty thousand units at ten dollars per unit. So purchase one hundred and fifty thousand units, ten dollars per unit, one point five mil. Got it. Terms of the purchases were 110 net 30, and the purchases were paid within the 10 day discount. So we have to figure out that discount of what? Uh, what is the discount of that? 110, so 15,000. So we have purchase discounts. I'm just going to put that off to the side for a minute. The company uses the gross method to record purchase discounts. And the merchandise was purchased. FOB shipping point means we own it the minute they ship it. Freight charges of 40 cents per unit were paid. I'm going to write that down too because we're going to need that. Okay, 3,000 units purchased during the year were returned to suppliers for credit. They were also given credit for the units sold, uh, the shipping per unit. So, Let's take the purchase returns. Three thousand units were sent back, and each unit was ten dollars and forty cents. So that's thirty-one two hundred. And then we have our purchase discounts because remember we bought fifteen. Uh, million dollars worth of stuff, but we sent $30,000 or 3,000 units of $10 each back. So our purchase discount is based on 1,470,000 minus our 14,700. Remember, this is periodic inventory, so we do all of these figurings at the end. So that's our purchase discount. So our purchase discount is fourteen seven. Plus the freight in we we brought in one hundred and fifty thousand units at forty cents per. Now we got some of that money back here. But remember, we're doing this periodically. We're doing this at the end of the period. So we're putting all of these units together, all of these numbers together. So our freight in was 150,000 times 40 cents. That's 60,000. So our beginning inventory plus purchases, minus purchase returns, minus discounts, minus allowances if there was any, plus freight in, that gives us our total goods available. This is just like you did in accounting one, but now we're doing real numbers. Okay. Uh, sales for the units with 145 units at 16 per, we'll get to that. Uh, they purchased 7,000 units at $10 each, but the goods were shipped FOB destination and arrive January 4th. We don't own those. 
their FOB destination. They belong to the shipper until we sign for them. So they are properly excluded from our inventory. So our total goods available, you add this up, it's uh, 1,754,100. Now, uh, our ending inventory, we had 32,000 units on hand. So 32,000 units ending inventory. They use periodic LIFO. So they have 32,000 of the units. So they have the beginning inventory, all 30,000 from the beginning inventory. So the beginning inventory was 30,000 units at $8, 240,000, plus an additional 2,000 at the price we just figured out, which was uh, $10 minus 2%, so $10 minus 2% is $9.90 plus 40 cents, $10.30, that's our second unit, so ten, $10.30. So that gives us 20,600. So the value of our ending inventory is 260,600. So that's our ending inventory. So let's bring that up here. Less ending inventory. 260,600. Do our subtraction. And our cost of goods sold is one million four hundred ninety-three thousand five hundred. That's the number we were seeking. Now I notice a lot of detail, but a that's what we get paid for. We're accountants, and b this is nothing new. Go back to accounting one. Cost of goods sold, beginning inventory, plus purchases, minus purchase discounts, minus purchase returns, minus purchase allowances, plus freight. We just did all of that. The only thing that is kind of new is you had to figure out the price per unit minus the discount. Because you couldn't take the $10.40 here because that didn't account for the discount. You had to take the $10 per unit times 98%, gave us $9.90 plus the 40 cents. That's the only thing that was even a little bit tricky, in my opinion. So, the value of the ending inventory, 260600 The cost of goods sold is everything that's left, $1 493,500 and then they say assume that operating expenses other than those indicated above were 190,000 okay so we can do that 145,000 units were sold they told us that at $16 per unit that gives us revenue of 2 million 320,000 minus cost of goods sold 1,493,500 and they tell us we had other operating expenses of 190 190 so our gross margin altogether our income before taxes 636,500 636,500 you had to be a little careful you had to follow along but it really wasn't difficult it's everything you knew 
sometimes you just didn't know how much you knew. Okay, that's it.